Greetings viewers and thanks for joining me out in the garage today. Mini truck behind me here, clutch time. It's time to do the uh, master cylinder, slave cylinder and fix that leaky line on my clutch. I got it running, now I gotta get it going. Then I'll worry about getting it to stop. Now you might notice I changed the wheels a little bit. These are the kind of wheels I need for this truck that fit the solid axle truck, Oswald agrees. I got three of them. I need two more because I'd like to have a match and spare. So if you got a couple like this, Oswald, get out of the way. Get out of the way, buddy. If you got a couple like that in white or chrome, uh, hit me up. I put these uh, black ones on the back just because the other tire was so tall, uh, it made it look real stupid. I did take, I don't know, his stuff in the way. Um, that tire is about three quarters of an inch taller than the front, so that'll drop it some. I did go in here on both sides and take out his homemade uh, extra block. There is a helper spring on this and a one inch lift block that I left. I think once I get the correct size tires all the way around, you can see the new U-bolts, and it's uh, he had some hokey looking stuff shoved in there, and the axle wasn't even centered on the pins. Uh, here's the other wheel I got. It does uh, tear it up right now, but it doesn't hold air for long, so it's not on. Plus, I only have three. So yeah, if you got one or two like this, this style, white or chrome, I need them. So that's a, like a two-minute plea already here on uh, just help me get <laughs> some wheels that match. I'm super excited to have the three that I have. They were donated to the show by a friend of mine, Andrew, uh, from another state, and he donated these. So I'm going to pause here real quick to show some pictures of his bitch and samurai. And he's getting ready to do a Toyota axle swap on that Samurai too. So a uh, big shout out to Andrew. Thanks, buddy, for those sweet wheels. Now if I could just find one or two more. Um, in here, this looks super wet because I sprayed all the exposed metal with fluid film. I'm going to undo the line. I'm going to try and reuse that coupler right there because clutch line isn't under uh, intense enough pressure for that to be an issue. If I can't get that out, I got enough line to make the whole line, but I really don't want to. So I'm going to get to taking this apart. This nut on the end is a 10, the uh, flare. Uh, once I get that out, I'll get the other side off of there, and we'll make a line and put some new pieces on here. I don't think there's really going to be a good way to get the camera in here. Uh, we'll go under the floor next. Ooh, that one's wallered out. Uh, I'm going to grab a better wrench for that. Of course, by better wrench, I mean a pair of vice grips that will actually fit this. Somebody uh, has clearly used some vice grips on this in the past. Let's see if I can make the same magic happen. Oh, broke right loose. Yay. Maybe I'll be able to use a wrench on it. From this point. Oh yeah. Oh, that line is broke clear in half and twisting right there, which is no big deal because I'm replacing it anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and break it in half there and get it the rest of the way out. You can see how that dude was broke off there. It was rotted in two. That's why I didn't have any clutch. I don't know if I'll reuse that end or fetch up a different one. Let's see if I can get it apart over there at the uh, compression union. All right, I got the other piece out uh, from the compression. It wasn't too difficult. Actually, both ends came apart pretty well. The fluid that did come dripping out of this line was nice and black and nasty. So I'm going to, uh, of course, flush the whole system when I put it back together. Let me make this line real quick. Hope you can see what all is happening here. I... Uh, I took that flare off the old tube 
Uh, they barely had it cranked on. It wasn't really compressed. I was able to get it off. I had to tap it down onto this hose, but I'm sure that it's going to compress and work just fine. On this end here, I've already test fit this new end into my new, um, yeah, master cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and flare this line. I think I've showed this before. Uh, lots of different types of flare tools. Mine is pretty archaic. But it gets the job done. This one you just put your uh, tube in. This one's the absolute smallest place and you want to kind of get it with just a little bit sticking up there to flare. And you got to crank it ridiculously tight. I use pliers to make sure it's mashed all the way. Then you put this piece on. Slide it over to your, uh, yeah, where you're going to make your flare. Put the little point in there. Crank it all down till it grabs. All right, and once it grabs, you just crank it. Hope you're seeing this. And crank it till it bottoms out. If you leave too much up there, it won't flare proper. It'll um, get too big too soon. If you don't have it tight enough, <laughs> it'll push it through. Now let me release that and push it back. And just to give that a second go around on the flare tool here. Fumble around. I didn't let you see me fumbling with getting that brass piece off, but it didn't really fight too much at all. All right, I did start to get a flare, but not enough. I'm gonna crank this down again. Crank this down in there one more time. You get the idea. If I have to go over to the bench and hold this in the vise, some things probably better done that way than holding them in front of the camera. But you can see again down in the in the thing, trying to make the thing do a thing. And it is flaring. Yes. If you can see. And definitely don't forget to put your piece on first. Alright, that has a nice flare now. That is not a huge flare, probably not as flare as big as it should be. You can see it fills in the end of the flare. It's going to meet the end inside the master cylinder correctly and seal up. Uh, if it don't, I'll take it loose and flare it again. That's basically how you struggle through a flare tool with really, or struggle through a flare with some really old tools there. All of it probably in the dark. Uh, I'm going to put this line in and then uh, we'll go about changing the master and the slave cylinder. Those were the most important parts of the deal. Hopefully you don't have to make a line for yours. All right, moving inside, you can see, of course I always have the light right where it's blocked. Um, there's the pin and the little spring that you need to remove. I don't know if I can get my hands up in there. Just pop that spring off, hope you can see that. Now you can just grab this little cotter key here, or pin, and up, pull it out. <laughs> pull it out and punch the camera. Now that one's got crud and corrosion on it, so I'm gonna probably have to smack it with a little hammer or something to get it to come loose. But that's all there is inside that has to come out. So let me pop that pen out real quick. There's two 12s, one there, one down there. I'm gonna get those here real quick uh, with a ratchet and extension. And if you gotta look at my corny air filter right there, I cut the bottom of the actual base out so it's up off the butterflies and then I just screwed this filter I had down to it. It seals all the way around and it works until I can find one. Now I got that other one out. Man, talk about putting up a fight. I had to annihilate the end of that thing just to get that corroded pin out. That thing's a mess. 
Now I've spilled brake fluid everywhere. Um, I'll clean all that up. Next thing you got to do though is bench bleed your new master cylinder to get all the air out of it. Use fresh dot three brake fluid for your clutch. Remember, brake fluid gathers moisture when it's left open. So you don't ever want to have all your brake fluidy stuffs open for longer than they need to because they will get moisture could cause a problem now the little hose here comes out of the end goes back into it i got these little holder things from another vehicle i had thankfully i have another pin too um, then you just push this back and forth try not to bottom it out but go all the way until um, bubbles quit you can see some bubbles coming up right at the end. Sometimes if you do it faster, it gets the bubbles out. I'll do it both ways a little slower. Until there's no more bubblies. Now, that gets you the most part your master cylinder full. Now I'm going to leave this hose and stuff in there just like that. When I go hook it up, it's going to be more of a mess. But if you don't do that, then you got air trapped in this thing here. It can be harder to bleed your clutch. So I'll go put this on, put the cap on, hook the line up, and then I'll go down, <clears throat> excuse me, to the master or the slave cylinder and do it. And I want to leave that off and let brake fluid flow all the way through so it's fresh. Uh, but don't let this run dry. Once you slide it in place there, go inside and check. Make sure the uh, bracket is straddling the brake pedal like so. Got lucky, that one fit. We'll come under there and adjust it uh, here in a minute. I'll show you the how and where of that. I'm gonna put the bolts on and then I'm gonna take the bleeder line out and hook the regular line up so this can start flowing. Once you got that all back in pretty and your line hooked up and your mess cleaned up, fill that reservoir back up. You'll go back in here and put your pin on. I'm gonna put that little spring on here real quick if I can reach it. Yeah, there we go, the little spring is back on. I'll show you how to adjust this. Leave this nut loose back there and I'll show you how to adjust that, but we gotta get pressure on the system first. That uh, mat or slave could be good, but I'm not gonna chance it. I'm just gonna go under there and change it and hook the new line up and uh, then I'll flush this whole system out and bleed it. I'm gonna get underneath there real quick, show you how to do that part. Okay. Underneath, these two 12s hold the slave cylinder on. The line comes in at the back. I don't know. Uh, I'm going to try to set this up somewhere so you can see what I'm doing, hopefully. But if not, that's uh, what needs to happen next. Okay, I guess maybe you can kind of see that. I'll try not to knock you over. Uh, hopefully... This line will come off a little easier. It's a 10. Hey, look at that. Now you don't want it stuck on there, so you gotta hold the line and uh, wiggle it a little. I know you can't see there, but uh, you hold the line and turn your fitting because you can't have it binding up there. You follow me. Now, hopefully this will just start dripping out fluid from the master cylinder up there. And that would be awesome. As I would like to flush this line, just make sure you don't let it run dry. Yeah, fluid's already coming down. Ow, that was my head. Uh, but I'll be okay. Come on now. What I'm going to do is take the bolts loose and get it away from that bracket. 
These are a 12. That one broke loose. That one broke loose. That's good. I love it that so much of this truck is coming apart and not putting up a big fuss. Some of it is like that freaking pin on the inside that wouldn't come out. So I'll show you how to adjust that pedal at the end here. But you gotta have some resistance on it. Brake fluid is so freaking slimy. It's definitely one of my least favorite fluids to have to work around. Okay, now I'm hoping Oh, this clutch fork isn't seized or something not weird and stuck in there. Well, I know. Uh, well, I don't know that. Okay, there. That old one's off and out of there. I'm going to check my fluid. All right, now hopefully you can hear me down there. The fluid quit flowing because of the air block and the line. I'm going to... Put some pressure on the master cylinder. See if I can't get some fluid to start flowing out the bottom there. I have a lid with a hole in it and a line going into it that I'm going to blow air through. Any fluid coming out? All right, now it looks like we got good, good drippage. Bolt this baby back up. Worry about the uh, bleeding of it in a little bit. I want to get that line started first. Don't want to cross thread it, but it was a little bit of a problem to get it started or get it out because it was up against the you know there we go well that wasn't bad the one up top fought me because I didn't want to lose all of my fluid that from bench bleeding it so of course it was an extra big problem all right, I'm going to put these bolts in. There we go. There's one. Make sure your uh, little clutch pushy nub is seated in the doohickey right, you know, right here. And this one is. It will line up better once both bolts are in. All right. Now, once I get this tightened up, bleeding it is the next thing, but I don't have anybody here to help me bleed it. So, mm -hmm. I will show you what I'll do here. I'm going to let it gravity bleed first. And I can apply more air through the cap if need be. It is a good way to get it past your um, air gap from like where I replaced that line. All right, nice and tight. All right, nice and tight. Finish that line. And then I will take the bleeder completely out, even though that should not be necessary in any way. But the larger the opening, mayhaps, the faster it'll flow. That's my theory. 
Now hold your line, don't let it twist. Ah, here you go, give that a nice one. So it's uh, good and snug. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull this bleeder out completely. And then I'm gonna go blow through that till the fluid starts flowing. Then I will put this back in. Now I had a nice steady flow pouring out of there. It's been dripping nice and constant. I filled that up a second time. And uh, like I said, I wanted to flush it through. It's down to a slow drip. I put this bleeder valve in. Now, not quite tight, just enough so it can start coming out the top there. As soon as it does, that's when I'll call it good. Yeah, it's, you can see it coming out now. It's got a bubble on the end. So that means there's still air in it. So pop that little bubble. Now, if you're watching the end while it's gravity bleeding, you'll see it keep popping bubbles. We're making a bubble on the end there. Hope you can see that from your vantage point on that bleeder. Uh, well, maybe I'm blocking it. I can't get the camera in a better spot. But as that comes up, you can put your finger over it so that you can tell if it's a bubble or if it's juice coming out. Your finger will draw it. If it's an air bubble, it'll pop. If it's solid fluid, it'll keep running out. Once you see it become solid fluid, go ahead and crank her down. Oh, wrong one. Uh -uh. All right, now everything should be full of fluid. You know, I gotta tell you viewers, me and bleeding things haven't ever got along. My overconfidence in that flare I made for you where I fumbled all around, it didn't really look quite right, it leaked. Uh, I spent time doing the air pressure through. I used my vacuum and vacuumed it through. Finally got fluid flow, finally let it gravity bleed. Uh, it's full fluid now, I shut it off. I tell you what, I had to rebuild that line up here. It's hot, it's sweaty, it's cussy. You didn't need to see any of that because uh, <laughs> I didn't need to see any of that. But I've got it done and I'm going to get underneath the uh, floorboards there and show you how to adjust the clutch pedal and then this will all be done. I am so happy to have pedal. Oh yeah. Now up here... See, that's okay by me, amount of play. I'll drive it around if it seems like I'm going down too far because it's starting to catch about right there. Um, tell you the truth, I might run that just a little bit. Now I'll turn this bar up here in the back. Uh, let's see, counterclockwise, like I'm unscrewing it from this piece. And then I'll run this nut up there. Hang on. Okay, now you couldn't see me because it took both hands. Uh, but I run it up there just a little bit more. Now it only has about that much before it starts getting pressure. That suits me. I'm going to run this lock nut tight here real quick. It's a 12. I can't probably get where you can see it. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe. Right, yeah, that just tightens up against that piece that fits the pedal. Don't need to be super tight. Now I got a real reasonable, almost no play. Uh, I'm going to set this up so you can see what's happening as this truck moves on its own without being started in gear. 
Boy, I sure hope the clutch works. Uh, you're going to find out with me. And Oswald. You'll see the big mess of fluid underneath there. Oswald! How you doing, buddy? Come on, let's go for a trip. All right, I'm going to see what happens. You're going to watch with me. I had a feeling it's all going to be good. <laughs> yes, buddy. Yes, buddy. <laughs> he loves to go for a ride. All right, starting with the clutch in. Yes. stopped when I came back and saw that. All right, that clutch might need some adjusting. Uh, carburetor needs some adjusting. That is fucking fantastic right there. I just drove my barn fine truck for the very first time. Thanks for watching me. Thanks for being a part of my show. Uh, I really do appreciate you. I'm hoping to find another wheel, get some right tires, make some fenders, move on, and get stuff done on this truck. I'm just loving this thing. Thanks for joining me for this clutch part. I know it went on a while, maybe, but um, yeah, my truck's running and driving and moving for the first time, and I couldn't be happier at the moment for these things. I'm going to get rid of you guys here and go drive around some more. But I really thank you for joining me out here in the garage today. Uh, please like if you like my show. Subscribe if you want to see more. Click bells. Leave comments. Those things all make a difference to me and to YouTube, but mostly to me. And I just, uh, yeah, appreciate you all a whole bunch. I'm going to go for a ride around the block in this thing. Have a super freaking great day. Thanks for joining me out here.